Hello guys and welcome back to Chant Talk. First of all, my sincere apologies that it's been so long since the last episode, but you know, life happens and you get busy. But uh, anyway, back and ready to uh, make some new episodes. Uh, I'm going to take just a slightly different angle and an approach at this point uh, now that the, you know, kind of chant accompaniment series is more or less wrapped up for now. Um, so it's going to be a little, little bit more in, in the vlog style where I'm just going to kind of chat with you about... Um, different church music topics, you know, specifically Catholic church music topics, but, you know, it could be um, polyphony, hymns, uh, Gregorian chant, the organ, organ literature, improvisation, uh, building and running church music programs, any of those kinds of things are all are all fair game. Uh, maybe church legislation on sacred music, who knows? Who knows what we're going to cover? But one of the things I'm really excited about is a portion of, of kind of the new direction for the show is uh, I'm going to have... Uh, I'm going to start building a list of guests who will join me on the show just to have conversations about all of these different things, um, you know, to get some different perspective out there for you guys to, to listen to. Um, and for kind of all of our own mutual edification, I think it's great to be able to network um, and then to share the fruits of that networking with uh, with the world. So I'm really excited about that. And, and with that in mind, guys, if you have not yet, please do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button down below so you can stay in touch with all these, you know, kind of new things that are going to be coming out about church music right here on my channel on Chant Talk. All right, now, today's topic, I wanna to talk a little bit more about organ improvisation. Now, the last time we talked about this, I did a little video on um, kind of beginning tips for uh, improvising on Gregorian chants. If you have not watched that video yet, click up here, have a look at it. It's just kind of a good introduction to how to take a chant theme and turn it into a, an improvisation. But today is gonna to actually be even more basic than that. This is really gonna be about um, more about your mindset with relation to uh, organ improvisation than actually what you're improvising, right? So I've got six kind of big bullet points here I wanna talk about today. We'll just go right through them. The first one, this is the most important one of all, guys. This is huge. The first point is that you can improvise. Yeah, you can. Guys, I can't even tell you how many uh, organists I've talked to who, uh, I, I don't know why, but they just, they truly believe that they simply cannot improvise. They can't do it. I don't improvise. I'm not an improviser. I can't do that. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Um, I could never learn to improvise. I just don't have it in me. Nonsense. Stop it. Stop that. Stop. Don't do that. Guys, you can improvise. And I'll tell you how I know that. Okay. I spent a lot of time working with um, with kids learning music and, and around kids learning music, uh, and one of the, the most rewarding things is to watch and uh, to help teach uh, young kids to learn to play jazz and to improvise in jazz. Look, these aren't all the next Charlie Parkers, okay? These are kids, some of whom can barely play a melody to save their lives, or you know, can't find beat two if their life depended on it, but they can learn basic improvisation. And that means you can too, especially a lot of you guys have a lot of, uh, a lot of musical training, a lot of theoretical knowledge, and a lot of technical prowess. And for some reason, people who have all that still tell me they can't improvise. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that, okay? And I understand it. Um, one of the things is it's, it's intimidating. It's a big thing, okay? If you grew up uh, classically trained and, and you, you know, you learned all the important stuff, you learned your scales and arpeggios, and you learned to read music, and you started right away reading, you know, all four of your notes and chorales and you learn functional harmony and, and you've always just kind of been that person that learns music off the page and plays what's on the page, um, then yeah, I mean, it's a huge paradigm shift to think of music in a different way. So I understand it can be intimidating, but here's the thing, like so many other big intimidating things, the most important thing is to just get started. Stop letting it intimidate you. Stop giving me your whole bucket list of excuses. I really don't care because I know that you can improvise, okay? Sit down and do it because you can, all right? Um, it, it is definitely a different skill set than a lot of folks have learned um, and it will take some time to get it right. We'll cover all that stuff in a bit. Point number two, okay? <laughs> One of the things that holds a lot of people back from really diving into improvisation is that they listen to something like this. And they think that they're just going to be able to do that overnight. Okay, guys, look. Guys like Olivier Latree you just heard there, or uh, Daniel Rolt, or, or any of these great improvisers, 
Um, <laughs> they didn't learn it overnight. They devoted their careers to, to this, okay? So stop comparing yourself, especially when you're just starting. Stop comparing yourself to those greats. Listen to those guys. Absolutely listen to them, right? But don't expect your improvisations to sound like that. Heck, I've been improvising for years and mine don't sound anything like theirs. I'm, I'm still a neophyte compared to those guys, right? All right, so don't get intimidated. That's point number two. Don't get intimidated by the greats, okay? Point number three really dovetails right in with that. And that's um, don't give up, all right? So I told you the most important thing was to just get started. But then a lot of people, they'll get started, they'll try, they'll get excited, they're like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I can do this. They sit down, they try a couple of improvisations, and they just, they really kinda sound like crap. Okay, well guess what, guys? A lot of your improvisations are gonna sound like crap for a while. Don't give up. That's exactly what it's gonna take for you to really make this a part of your musical language. You've got to do it and not give up when your first, you know, early improvisations don't sound good. Heck. Even some of your later improvisations won't sound good. I, f I find myself um, still discouraged from time to time after an improvisation. I'm just like, wow, that was what I had in my head did, did not come out of the instrument. Um, it it kind of goes with the territory, but I can promise you almost always it's not nearly as bad as you think it is, or at least to your, to your listeners. Um, with a few exceptions, but we'll leave those aside. Okay, so don't give up just because you're not satisfied yet with your improvisations. In fact, let that be the impetus to keep going, all right? Now, number four, um, learn jazz. I already mentioned before, you know, watching young kids learn to play jazz. Um, I think that's a, a really, really critical thing for anyone who wants to improvise in any style, right? Obviously, we're not, you know, uh, trying to, to improvise in the jazz style, but it's a language. It's a paradigm. It's a way of thinking about music and chords and structure and harmony and melody that you probably didn't get if you've only ever been classically trained. Okay? Learn jazz. There's so many great videos on the internet about that. If, 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 you're, if you're still in school, join the jazz band, guys. Join the jazz band. Learn to play, all right? Something new may not be your cup of tea. I promise you, you'll thank yourself for it later, okay? Learn to play jazz. I'll throw a couple of video links down in the description below. Uh, just some, some primers on jazz. Really, dive into it a little bit. Have a little fun with it and let it inform your playing. Because really, at the end of the day, what we want to be able to do is to take the Curier from Mode 8 and improvise in a jazz blues fashion like this. Yeah, no, that's not what we want to be able to do. Yeah, no, don't, 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 don't do that. No, <sighs> no. But let me reiterate, it's about learning that language. It's about changing your paradigm. It's about learning really, really to, to converse with chords. Not, not just the functional harmony that you learned in your theory classes. To really internalize these structures of chords and the idea of creating a melody over a chord and over a structure, you know, it's almost more related to um, hymn reharmonization than, than, you know, writing a chorale, right? So learn jazz. It's fun. All right, number five. I already alluded to this a little bit, but it deserves its own point here. Number five. Practice, right? It, it all goes back, you know, people get discouraged when they can't do it at first or whatever. It's like, well, well, do you, do you practice improvisation? Do you? Do you practice improvisation? I do, all the time. For me, it's more than half of my practice. That's just a huge part of what I do. I mean, it has to be. I, I play for the Extraordinary Form of the Mass, and, and so it's so chant-oriented, and there's so many little places to fill, you know, after the elevation, you know, the offertory communion, so many places, um, that improvisation is part and parcel of my work. And so, yeah, I practice it, and you, you should too. You know, when you learn to play the organ, did you play Vitor's Second Symphony after your second lesson? No. If you did, give me a call. I want to talk to you. Okay? No. It, t it took you time to learn the instrument. It's going to take you time to learn and become comfortable with improvisation as well. That's where that jazz will help again. But, point being, set aside, ah, I don't want to throw a number on it, but I guess I'll throw a number on it. Set aside at least 20% of your practice time to just improvise. Playing with ideas. To pick a theme. A hymn that you like. The melody or a chant that you really like, just the melody. Take that melody 
and play with it. Put it in different keys. Turn it into, if it's in major, make it minor. If it's, you know, whatever, change the mode with it a little bit. Play with the mode that it's written in if it's a chant. Um, try a counterpuntal line with it. Do all these different things. Find some dissonance that's fun. Mess up. Make a royal mess of it. You're practicing. Who cares? Just practice. Play. Feel quite free to explore the tonal and textural and rhythmic possibilities. Most importantly, just do it. Practice, practice, practice. Okay? Um, whether you're a professional organist who spends 20, 30, 40 hours a week practicing, or whether you're a Sunday church organist who has a 40 hour a week job and you only get to practice two hours a week, you know, whatever it is, set aside that time in your practice. You know, look, the fugue you're working on, you'll get it. It'll be fine. <laughs> practice it, but also practice improvisation. Okay? All right. And then number six, this is another practical thing you can do. Record yourself improvising, but don't necessarily listen to it right away. Sometimes you might want to. You might want to get yourself some instantaneous feedback from that. But for the most part, what I find is I'm often a little bit disappointed in an improvisation I've played, um, only because there, there is so often that disconnect between the brilliant idea you had in your head and how well you communicated that through the instrument, through the registration, through, you know, your, your improvisation as a whole, right? So, um, I often don't want to listen to my improvisations right away because I might already be a little frustrated with something because something didn't go quite right. But if I let it sit for a while, a week, maybe a month, and then come back to it and listen to it, I'm often surprised at how pleasing it was. I'm not tooting my own horn and saying, wow, look at my improvisation. No, but, but just revisiting it with a little space and distance between any emotional reaction I may have had to it often gives me the perspective to say, oh yeah, that improvisation fulfilled its purpose well. You know, it, it, it brought out the melody I wanted to bring out, it, it set the mood I wanted to set, it filled the time I needed to fill, you know. Um, or maybe it didn't, and that gives you stuff to work on. Right? So record it, but maybe don't listen to it right away. Just have it on the shelf or on the hard drive or whatever, and then come back to it later. Um, so, you know, as a bonus point, I, I guess I thought this would go without saying, but I'm going to throw it out there. We'll call this number seven. Um, you've got to listen to the great improvisers. Uh, I'm going to put a few more links about those down in the descriptions, too. Um, some channels and some videos that, that are, are just so good. You've got, if, if you're not listening to it, you're, you're not going to internalize it and you're not going to be able to reproduce it. Um, Father was just preaching in his sermon at our church last week about uh, in order to love something, you have to know it. And I think that's really the case here. In order to love, to internalize, um, to really to become intimate with um, improvisation, you need to listen to improvisation. Of the style especially that you're interested in, but also branch out a little bit. You know, if you're one of those... Um, Lovers of the Baroque and you, you, you know, fugues are your thing. Well, good for you. That's great. So listen to some improvised fugues, listen to, you know, written fugues, whatever. But also branch out a little bit. Get into the French Romantic stuff, the, you know, kind of the whole French school of, of improvisation. Take a look at that. Uh, listen to some Messiaen. Um, Tornemir, uh, Cochereau, you know, you know, the more modern guys, like I said, you know, Messiaen and stuff. Listen to it and um, pull some ideas out. Even if it's just one little tiny thing, maybe one, one chord movement, or one little melodic idea, or a modulation that you found interesting, or uh, maybe a mood. You know, listen to an improvisation, be like, ooh, that was a really neat atmosphere that that created. Let me try to recreate it. Or registration, right? Listen for, you know, registration ideas that you can try. You're like, oh, wow, I never would have thought to pull the vox on that, but that was really neat. Um, so listen, 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 listen. All right, quick review. Number one, you can improvise. If you're saying that you can't, beat that out of your head. You can improvise. Uh, you absolutely can. Number two, don't be discouraged if you don't sound like the greats uh, right up front. That's unrealistic. Number three, which fits right with that, don't give up just because your early improvisations don't sound good. Uh, number four, learn to play jazz. It will help you. Uh, number five, practice. You've got to build practice into, uh, you've got to build improvisation practice into your regular practice time. Uh, number six, record and revisit what you've improvised. And kind of bonus point, listen, listen, listen. All right, that's all I got for you tonight. Um, so I uh, hope that's helpful. Hope that gets you started. Hope that convinces you that you really can do this. Uh, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and I will see you guys next time.